Hello, Honors Chemistry students. This is Mr. Spurk, and this is your Chapter 16, Section 1 Notes on Properties of Solutions. So when we talk about the dissolving process, there are three factors that affect it. The first one is agitation, the second one is temperature, and the last one is the particle size of the solute. So let's talk about iced tea. If you've ever been to a restaurant, you may have ordered iced tea, and you know that iced tea is pretty bitter. Um, I'm not talking sweet tea, I'm talking just brewed iced tea. Um, it is a brown solution, and typically people try to sweeten it up by adding in sugar. So if this has ever been you, I'm sure you can relate. You add in maybe a sugar packet and you try to stir, and it takes a little while for that to dissolve. And maybe you put two packs of sugar in, and maybe you can't get all of it to dissolve at all. So as we talk about that, keep all of that in mind as we move forward. So we're going to first talk about agitation. So the dissolving process occurs at the surface of the sugar crystals. So think of just maybe a cube of a sugar crystal. The edges, the surface, is where it dissolves, right? Think about, um, how about like a gobstopper? When you eat a gobstopper or a jawbreaker, it doesn't dissolve from the inside out, right? You slowly wear it away from the outside and then it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So the dissolving process, which is what you're doing when you're eating a gobstopper, occurs at the surface. So we can stir it and stirring speeds up the process because fresh solvent, which would be the iced tea or the water, is continually brought in contact with the surface of the solute, which is the sugar. So as you're stirring it, you're bringing fresh water in the glass that doesn't have sugar uh, dissolved in it yet to the sugar. So that fresh water is now going to try to dissolve those new sugar molecules. And stirring or shaking only affects the rate, but does not influence how much solute you, you can dissolve. So if I just put five packets of sugar in my iced tea, like maybe this person did here, you can clearly see that not all of it dissolved. And maybe over time, if I just let it sit out, it would start to dissolve. But as I stir or shake that glass, it's going to start to dissolve quicker. So I can affect the rate, but that doesn't mean that I can put 10 sugar packets in, stir it, and dissolve it. There is a limit. And stirring and shaking does not affect that limit. It just affects the rate. So temperature. This is one that we have all experienced. At, a high t at higher temperature, the kinetic energy of the water molecules is much greater. This increases the frequency of collisions between those water molecules and the surface of the sugar crystals. And again, if you've ever had, drank iced tea and then maybe had hot tea or even hot coffee, when you put a packet of sugar in there, it pretty much dissolves right away. You might not even have to do any stirring. That's because those water molecules have such a higher kinetic energy. The, the molecules of water are colliding with the sugar so much faster than if it were colder. And that's going to speed up the rate of um, the solution, the dissolving process. And the last one we're going to talk about is particle size. So you may have seen, I'm sure, come across at some point sugar cubes versus sugar packets. So they are about the same amount of sugar. However, a sugar cube is very rigid, whereas a sugar packet is, you know, just the tiny little particles of sugar. So smaller particles expose much greater surface area to the colliding water molecules. Because think, in a cube of sugar, the only exposed edges are the surface. None of these little sugar particles are exposed. But in a sugar packet, where it's crushed up, it is much more exposed. So since dissolving occurs at the surface, the more surface area that is exposed, the faster the rate of dissolving. This is why we use powders in the lab rather than chunks of solids. Okay, so let's talk about solubility. 
So at some point, the rate of solvation, which is the dissolving process, equals the rate of crystallization. And basically what that means is there's going to reach a point where I put enough sugar molecules into my water that some are going to dissolve and some are going to go back into the crystal of sugar. That's called crystallization. So what that means is that there's no net change. So we're not dissolving more because the same amount that's dissolving is coming back out into the solid form. So this solution is said to be saturated. A saturated solution is a solution that contains the maximum amount of solute for a given quantity of solvent at a constant temperature and pressure. So again, maybe you're out at the restaurant somewhere and you're adding a sugar packet to your tea and you're stirring and stirring and stirring, you're eventually going to reach a point where no more sugar will dissolve. That water is going to basically say, I've had enough, I don't want any more, and no more will dissolve. That's called a saturated solution. So solubility, we've talked about the words soluble and insoluble before. Solubility is the amount of solute that dissolves in a given quantity of solvent at a specified temperature and pressure to produce a saturated solution. So basically it just says, we can look up solubility values for like, if water is at 100 degrees Celsius, how much salt will dissolve? Or if it's at 50 degrees Celsius, how much salt will dissolve? This is often expressed in grams of solute per 100 grams of solvent. So for example, there is some number of grams of sodium chloride that will dissolve in 100 grams of water. So since we talked about saturated solutions, there are also unsaturated solutions. An unsaturated solution is a solution that contains less solute than a saturated solution at any given temperature and pressure. So basically an unsaturated solution is saying that you can add more solute and it will dissolve. So a glass of plain iced tea with no sugar in it is an unsaturated solution. If you add so much where you can no longer dissolve anymore, it's considered saturated. So if two liquids can dissolve in one another, like ethanol and water, they are said to be miscible. Liquids that are insoluble in each other are called immiscible, such as oil and water. And these are very similar to the terms we've talked about when we talk about solids in water or solids in liquid. We use the terms soluble and insoluble. So soluble and insoluble are for solids dissolving in a liquid, whereas miscible and immiscible are when we're talking about dissolving a liquid in another liquid. So temperature affects the solubility of solids, liquids, and gases while pressure only affects the solubility of gases. And think about carbonation or the bubbles that are in um, you know, a bottle of pop. So solubility of most solids increases as the temperature of the solvent increases. And that should make sense. Think about iced tea compared to hot tea. You're gonna get a lot more sugar in the hot tea than you will in the cold tea. And this is an experiment that you could try at home. Um, so here we just have a graph, and this graph shows us the solubility. So this is how many grams of that substance per 100 grams of water will dissolve at different temperatures. So again, we can look at, sorry, we can look at uh, how salt. Salt isn't really affected. Look how it's just this flat line. So you're going to be able to dissolve roughly, you know, about 40 grams of salt in cold water and hot water, whereas other compounds like sugar are going to act a little different. And we can talk about why that is. Think about sodium chloride. This is an ionic compound, and we know that ionic compounds dissolve really easily, whereas um, larger compounds or even covalent compounds don't dissolve as readily. You can see for potassium nitrate, at low temperatures, you're only going to dissolve about maybe 17 grams in 100 grams of water. But as we heat it up at 80 degrees, we're going to be able to dissolve about, about 45 or about 50 grams of potassium nitrate in that warmer water. 
So solubility often changes with temperature. All right, a supersaturated solution. This is a solution that contains more solute than it can theoretically hold at a given temperature. So again, let's just look at this sodium nitrate. So sodium nitrate at 70 degrees Celsius should max out at 20 grams. However, there is a way that we could get more into that solution. And how we do that is we actually heat it up. So we make it go to like 80 degrees Celsius and maybe we dissolve like uh, 30 grams and then we let it cool back down. And sometimes those crystals of sodium nitrate will stay dissolved. And so we can initiate that crystallization. So we can make those crystals what we call crash out or form again by adding a seed crystal. So we're going to go ahead and look at this link I have for you. And with this link, this uh, teacher here is dissolving sodium acetate into hot water. So he's already made the solution. This is a super saturated solution. So there is more sodium acetate crystals dissolved in this water than there should be. So what he's going to do is he's going to cause crystallization. He's going to take a sodium acetate crystal that's in the solid form out of the bottle and drop it in there. And you're going to see that once the other crystals that are dissolved see a solid, well, let's just see what happens. So there he's, there's the seed crystal, and you can see all of a sudden that all the other crystals in the solution start turning back into crystals because at this temperature, they want to be out of solution. They don't want to dissolve. So you can see that it's going to go ahead and basically fill the entire container. And then you can see that it's basically a complete solid. And they're going to be able to touch it and see those solids. So again, sad that I have to show it to you on YouTube. That's usually one of my favorites uh, to show in class. But uh, that's okay. He does a pretty good job. All right, last thing to talk about. Uh, the effective temperature on the solubility of gases in a liquid is actually the opposite. So what we saw on the graph earlier was for most solids, as we heat up the liquid, more solute can be dissolved. But for gases, it's the opposite. The solubilities of gases are greater in cold water. So, and gas solubility increases as the partial pressure of the gas increases. So this is how we make pop, or even beer works this way. So carbonated drinks are bottled under high pressure. So we have to cool the liquid, very, very cold, inject it with uh, carbon dioxide gas, which is the carbonation in bubbles. And it also has to be under high pressure. And you can see that that's what we're looking at here. You can't see the bubbles. And if you look at a bottle of pop when you buy it, you don't see the bubbles there because this is very high pressure. So there's a lot of pressure pushing down. And so then, as soon as you unscrew that cap, remember, pressure flows from high areas to low areas. So the pressure decreases. Therefore, all the gas that's dissolved in there wants to all of a sudden be a gas again. It wants to go into the gas phase. And that's why pop uh, and other drinks are quite fizzy. As always, all the information on these slides has been acquired and adapted from Pearson Chemistry, 2012 edition of the textbook, resources CD, and pearsonchem.com. Have a great day.